Today we're, we're incredibly excited about the new installation of sculptures on our terrace from Kim Dickey. The work is truly fantastic. It adds an element of surprise and whimsy to a beautiful uh, outdoor terrace where our patients actually can enjoy the outdoor environment during their visits to the Koch Center. We decided um, that the sixth floor terrace was an ideal spot to locate outdoor sculpture and when searching for an artist, we were looking at some ceramics um, publications and came across Kim Dickey's work. And Kim is a Colorado-based artist. And we saw that her theme was gardens and she had animal sculptures, garden animals, and hedges and things that reminded us of the greenery of New York and the parks and the things that people love about New York when it comes to its green spaces. So when we saw Kim's work, we thought it would be a wonderful and whimsical addition to our terrace. Kim's sculptures are made out of cast concrete and terracotta and they weigh thousands of pounds. Kim spent almost two years crafting these artworks and she then needed to get it on a truck to come from Colorado to New York. We craned them up the side of the building on 73rd Street um, one morning using a crew of around 40 people to do that and then the sculptures came onto the terrace and we had another crew who uncrated the sculptures and placed them via rigs at various points on the site, so it was a very involved operation, and we are very happy it went so smoothly. This was an incredibly um, wonderful project to be invited to consider from the very beginning. Um, the garden, as a, as a subject, um, a rich, um, complicated subject has always in, has often and, and, and consistently inspired my work. Gardens are always about the real, what's grounded, what's in front of you, and the ideal, what's paradise, where would you like to be ideally transported. So I was thinking about how I could create a space that both encloses you the way gardens do and then also connects you to other sites within New York that you may have history with and, um, and that may be familiar or unfamiliar or something you haven't noticed before that, you can, that could trigger um, an awareness of the sort of rich architectural and sculptural landscape around us. The first piece that I think you confront from the cafeteria and exit is the uh, inverted L beam. I had read um, Bob Morris's um, notes on sculpture and have always uh, loved his writing, his work, his thinking. Again, the way he um, complicates the, the, the relationship or conflates the relationship between the realm of the public and the realm of the private um, and questions what we understand is a constructed environment. That inverted L is a sort of nod to his inverted L beam, which is actually currently on the Whitney's terrace outside the High Line <laughs> of the new building. These are aluminum sculptures that are perforated and then terracotta uh, glazed um, leaves. And I, I, they're quatrefoils for the most part, though there are some two-leafed and three-leafed um, leaves in there. And the glaze is variegated, so it's meant to reference the sort of stages of growth and decay that all leafy walls uh, reveal. So that, as I say, that sense of time is embedded in the, in the work. The other bookend sculpture that is similar, we'll come to at the end, both of them are kinds of portals, if you will, creating a sort of gateway um, to wherever your, your viewpoint is directed. The concrete animals are supposed to be reminiscent of the denizens of New York street life. Things you would notice on your walks through the city. They're foliated surfaces. That leaf pattern that covers them, uh, as I was, uh, that is um, part of this Green Man architectural ornamentation um, tradition that goes well back um, into the to the medieval period. This dog, which is titled The Girlfriend, um, parenthetically Fidelity, and um, 
all of these animals, these, these three, as I had mentioned, are from architectural ornamentation or heraldic um, ornamentation that are representing the attributes uh, that we would like to embody. Um, so fidelity for the, for the um, dog here. We have a joke that my husband married me for my dog and that um, she's the girlfriend <laughs> in, the, in the family, my, my competition. But, um, but she's my girlfriend too, so she's everyone's girlfriend. The um, collector, which is the name of the squirrel, parenthetically is about memory. This attribute that I'm sort of that we attach to the squirrel is actually um, very funny because squirrels never remember, apparently don't remember where they bury their nuts. <laughs> so, so this is a this is a a tribute to our our all of our fa fallibilities as as animals as humans. Um, that we, that we strive to have memory, but we don't often achieve it. And then lastly, you turn the corner and you see the guardian animal, which is the lion, par parenthetically named Patience, with a nod to Patience and Fortitude from the New York Public Library. And the lion is sitting uh, right in front of the half arch wall, which is again, uh, aluminum form. Um, perforated and then clad with the terracotta glazed um, green quatrefoil. And I'm hoping the site and these inhabitants satisfy anyone's need who visits to, um, to dream, to hope, to see interesting, beautiful futures that also ground you in the place that you live. This is my first opportunity to make work for a hospital and I'm deeply moved um, to, to create something that serves as a respite for both the staff, doctors, patients, and their family members. It is remarkable to me how much they feel at home here, how, how much uh, they feel like they belong. So, um, wow, what a, how lucky they, they are, these creatures, these objects, these sculptures to find themselves in such a place and how lucky I am to see them there, so thank you.